Hey everyone, I'm Damien the Kung Fit Coach and today we're going to be looking at Poo It's also sometimes known as Drop Stance, Crouch Stance or even Foo Hoo Boo which means Taming the Tiger Stance. Now this move is really good for your hip strength and your mobility, great for stretching out your adductors and it's really going to help you if you're struggling with something like a Cossack Squat which is a really beneficial exercise to do but does require quite a lot of flexibility to get all the way down to that full range of motion. So we're going to look at how to do this stance properly, things to avoid with it, how it's used in terms of actual practical application and then of course at the end we'll look at various ways to train this stance to make sure that you can get it absolutely spot on. Okay, let's get into it then. So as with our Mabu that we did previously, we want our feet to be about a leg's distance apart. So we spread our feet out, get the right distance for you. Then we want to make sure that our feet are flat on the floor, we're not lifting our toes up, we're not lifting our heels up, and we're not coming in or out perfectly flat. This stance we can do on our left hand and our right hand side. We're going to do it on the right hand side first, so I'm going to turn my right foot out, to about 45 degrees, and then like with our shubu, I want my toes to be in line with my knees. So the knee tracks over the toes. That's why we have it at that 45 degree angle, to make sure that we can allow that. Too close in, my knees can be outside. Too far out, my knees gonna be on the inside. So get those nice and lined up, and we keep this left leg straight. And that's the first kind of setup of our poo-boo. From here, we just sink down. Now you might find that you can't sink down very far, either because of leg strength or hip mobility, but equally you might find that as you sink down further and further, actually the problem is your heel starts to come up. And as we said, we really don't want to do that, we want to keep the feet flat on the floor. So what we're going to do, look at next is things that we can do to try and get around those common problems. So we've got the first bit of our stance ready then, but we're having problems with mobility and strength. Strength, pretty straightforward, practice this more and you'll find it easier and easier to take the weight in those positions. But obviously the mobility, the flexibility is potentially a little bit harder. So if I go back into this position, if my hip mobility and my adductor on the inside here is the problem, then I need to make sure that I'm stretching those out and I'm working those. If my Achilles in my calf is the problem, then I need to make sure that I'm stretching those. So work out what your problem is and we can work on fixing it. Let's look at the calf and the Achilles first. So we want to stretch them out. Easiest way to do that, have your leg nice and straight, bend over and then pull back on your toes. You might want to use both hands, but that should get you a nice kind of stretch up the back of the calf. You can also Put your foot up against an elevated surface, I'm going to use these stall bars here, and then you can lean forward into it and that will allow you to get a much better stretch. Now if your Achilles is the problem, and often these two will be related, squat down, I'm just going to turn this left leg out, I'm going to have my knee again lined up with my toes, and I'm going to lean forward, and you'll feel this stretch in your ankle, you can put a bit more pressure on it by leaning on the knee as well. And this will really help stretch out that ankle which will allow you to get lower without that heel coming up. Okay, so next problem we might have then is our adductor flexibility. Adductors, muscles on the inside of the thigh. So we want to try and stretch those out to increase the flexibility. Now I mentioned Cossack squats earlier and essentially we're going to stretch that Cossack squat position. So I turn my right foot out again, track my knees over the toes, and then my left foot, I'm gonna keep it straight, but toes pointed up towards the ceiling. And then from here, I lean to the side and try and sink my hips down a little. So you should feel this stretch along the inside here. Now I'm doing it quite high here. You may well feel that this is enough a stretch, if that's not getting it for you, you can go a bit lower. So you can spread your feet a little bit wider 
and then same again, turn those toes up, lean over, and then sink your body further down. And then again, you can do it on the other side, sink your body further down. And you might find actually, eventually, you can get all the way down here, and that's fantastic. That's kind of what we're aiming for. But you're not gonna be able to do that to begin with, so you need to really work on that stretch, lengthen out those muscles, and that will help you get down into this poo-poo position. So the final thing we need to work on is our hip mobility and strength. So probably the best way to do this is with side to side squats. So what we do is again, we spread our feet out nice and wide, but this time we're gonna squat with both legs and then we're gonna move from side to side. So I'm not going up at all, just side to side and I'm trying to go as far across as I can. Now what you'll probably find is that you can't get particularly far with your feet facing forward. So turn those feet to face out about 45 degrees and then you can go a lot further and probably a little bit lower. Now this is really going to work your mobility, it's going to work the muscles that you need to hold a poo-boo. So we just keep doing this from side to side and again repeat it regularly, build up the strength. Okay, so we've worked on our mobility, we've worked on our flexibility, and we've worked on our stretch. So now we can finally get down to here. We're done, right? Poo boo sorted, let's go on to the next thing. Not quite. This is where a lot of people stop though, but it's not a full poo boo. Notice most of my weight is over towards my right hand side, and I'm facing straight on. That is not how we want to be. We actually want our weight more central, and we want to be turned towards our extended leg. So, watch me as I go down, weight over to one side, facing forwards. I actually want to shift my body to the left slightly, which helps move my weight towards the centre, and I want to turn my hips, so I'm actually looking down along my extended leg. And this is our final poo position. You can be lean forward a little bit, you can be a bit more upright, that depends on how you're using this, but you do want to make sure you're turned and you do want to make sure that weight is pushed towards the middle. So that's what we're aiming for with our poo-boo, rather than that lent over to the side position that a lot of people end up in. Now the final thing we want to think about when we're doing our poo-boo is how we actually get into it. A lot of people when they're starting out, they'll spread their legs, they'll get their weight central and then they'll sink back a little. And then when they're down, maybe they'll do that little bit of adjustment to get the position right. But notice what my head's doing when I do that. So I go here, and then back, and then maybe adjust. But my head's come all the way forward, only to come back again. And that very much defeats the object of poo-boo, which we'll get into in a second. We don't want to be throwing our head towards our opponent. We want to try and stay away. So actually going into the poo-boo, we want to try and keep our head and our body weight over to one side as much as possible, and then we transition into the position when we're at the bottom. So we come down, keeping weight over here, and then we sink into the right position, rather than out and back, okay? And obviously, we can do poo boo on the left-hand side as well. Exactly the same, we get that legs distance apart, turn the foot out, track the knees over the toes, turn the hips, lean the body over that extended leg. That's pretty much it for um, how you do poo boo properly. So let's have a look at some of the applications. So in terms of application, poo boo is actually a really versatile stance. First we'll look at it as a defensive posture. So I've talked previously with Shubu about how you're leaning back defensively. Poo boo can do the same but to a much more extreme degree. I'm going all the way back here, so a really big dodge. However, I've got that front leg still there, and that's really important, because that allows me to spring back up really quickly to counterattack. But also, it plays a big factor in my range. I can only punch, say, this far here, for example, but if I bring my rear foot up, I've actually gained a lot of range. So by retreating back, you know, my opponent might have missed by quite a way and now think there's no way that I can reach him with a counterattack because I'm so far away. But because I've still got this foot here, I can actually come all the way back up 
and get quite a lot of range out of that counterattack. So that's one way that we can use it. Another is, quite simply, just as a low attack. I can just kick out with my extended leg and by sinking low, again, that gives me longer range on that kick. It can also be used in a number of different ways for takedowns and throws. Most basic one is coming in and using the fact that it's a low stable stance, so a low centre of gravity, and you can come in and you can grab someone's legs and you can lift them up, double leg kind of takedown, or you can grab a leg, do a more sweeping kind of takedown. All sorts of different things that you can do this, exploiting the fact that you're really low down, your centre of gravity is low, and you can make big kind of swinging motions with it or pulling motions with it and take your opponent off balance. In a slightly smaller frame version of this, not sinking quite so low, you can also see it in the judo throw Tai Otoshi. You've got one leg bent, you've got the other leg straight, and essentially you're using that straight leg as a point of leverage to throw your opponent over your hips, over your thigh, and get them down to the floor. So it's really quite versatile for throws and takedowns as well. Next thing we can use it for is to control suddenly dropping our weight. Again, it's a, a low position, a stable position, our centre of gravity is getting low, and we can get down into it uh, quite quickly. We see this in forms such as Tongbei Chuen or Lian Huan Chuen, where we're going from a high position down to a low position. And this sudden dropping of weight, again, allows us to manipulate an opponent and pull them down with us. But obviously, we're controlled and they're not. In Lian Huan Chuen, for example, we're up in this position here, and we turn back, and as we turn back, we sink our weight down, and we end up in this poo position. And we can do this really quite suddenly. The aim of this is pulling our opponent down with us. Meanwhile, in Tongbei Chuen, we've got the thousand pound hammer, and again, it's the same principle, but going straight down rather than turning as we come down. Another way that Pubu can be used is gaining ground and entering into your opponent's space. So you shoot that leg out and then come up to attack them. And that's where it's really important to keep the weight back and transition smoothly through rather than going forward and then backwards. And when you do this, you might actually adopt more of a Cossack squat position. So rather than having both feet flat on the floor, actually turn that front foot toes up and that just makes it a little bit easier to flow through and get into attacking your opponent. Now the final way that you might see this position used is in a back sweep. Essentially the position that you get into with that is very similar to Pubu, the only difference is that we lift the heel up on the bent leg to give us more ability to spin round, but the basic kind of position is pretty much the same. So as I say, a very versatile stance, even though it looks a little bit weird, you're probably not necessarily going to use it all the way down here, but the basic principles can be applied in lots of different situations. So we've already talked about a few ways that you can train this when you're just starting out to make this position easy to get into. Once you're a little bit more advanced though, there are some other things that we can do to train this. Stretching out your adductors, still keep doing those because you'll be able to get lower and lower and lower. Saying about Cossack squats again, actually a really good exercise to help with your poo-poo, as well as your poo-poo helping your Cossack squats, because it helps build up the strength that you need for getting low into this position and being able to move through it quite fluidly. A similar exercise is to do essentially just poo-poo switches from side to side. So it's a bit like our side to side squat, but we're going down lower, so going all the way down into our poo-poo, we're making sure that we're turning towards that front leg, and then we switch over to the other side. Again, turn to look. So I'm turning and shifting my legs. To begin with, you might find that a bit difficult, so you can use the ground for support, 
If you're still not quite that low, you can also hold on to something, say a chair, and just help you with your balance and take a little bit of the weight for you to make that exercise just a little bit easier. And eventually you can work down to hands on the floor and then no hands at all. Next thing relates back to that idea of not going forward, and that's what I like to call poo-boo drops. So we take all of our weight on one leg, this leg is just here for balance, and we sink down, one-legged squat, but as I say, leg for balance, then we shoot that left leg out, and then turn through to our poo-boo. Then we can do it the same on the other side, sink down, right leg just for balance here, shoot that leg out, keep my weight over here, but then sink and turn towards the extended leg. And that really helps get that idea of not shifting your weight forward and then back. Final thing is really gonna help with the turning of the hips towards that extended leg. It'll really help with things like uh, back sweeps as well. And that's to go down into your poo boo and reach your hands towards your extended leg and then turn back. So we're sweeping our hands across the floor and then back. And we're trying to reach the opposite hand, opposite foot as close as you can and back. And again, we'll repeat that on each side. So if you do those few exercises, they'll really strengthen your stance, increase your mobility and you'll have a fantastic poo boo in no time. So that's about it. Poo-boo covered in quite a lot of detail there. Hopefully you found that useful. Don't forget to like the video, click subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.